So in this video, I'm going to look at comparing some ODE solutions in MATLAB. So the ODE I'm considering is y dash is equal to 3y plus t, and it has an initial condition of y of 0 is equal to 2. So the different solutions that we're going to try and compare, initially it's using Euler's method with h is equal to 0 0.1, and this is what I did manually in the previous video. We're then going to see what happens when we change the step distance to be 0 0.05, we're also going to compare that to using MATLAB's built-in ODE45 uh, function. Um, and finally, we're going to look at comparing to the analytical solution because that actually exists for this particular um, ODE. So we're going to start by programming um, Euler's method into MATLAB. And just as a reminder, this is the equation that we need to program. So it's going to be like a repetitive process where the next point in our sequence is equal to the previous point plus the h value times the gradient at the previous point. All right, so I'm going to jump across to MATLAB. And starting a new script window here, I'm going to put in the beginning clear all and close all, just to make sure that I'm starting with a cleared workspace and no uh, figure windows open each time. So I'm going to start by doing part A, which was uh, looking at the whoop, Euler's uh, method and applying a h value of 0.1. So I'm going to put in some of these parameters that we um, are going to use. So first of all, the h value needs to be set um, within the code. And we need to pick a time um, up until we run this um, simulation too. So I'm going to call it tend, and arbitrarily I'm just going to pick a time of one uh, second. So what I can do now is set up a time vector, which means that I'm going to start at a particular time. I'm going to go with zero. I want to calculate um, the y value at each, each step distance. So my step distance is h, and I want to run it up to the end point, so t end. So what this is going to do, I'll run it for us, is set us up a time vector. You can see up here, I'll actually just type it in. So you can see it's looking at time 0, 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on, all the way up until we reach that end value of 1. So in a moment, we're going to try and calculate the y values corresponding, corresponding to each of these different points. But there's one that we already know, and that's at time equals 0, we know that our initial condition is y is equal to 2. So I'm going to introduce a new um, variable. Um, I might call it y1. And I'm going to set the first value in it, so y1 of 1, to be equal to that initial condition of 2. Okay. So what I'm going to then do is try and figure out what is happening in the second, third, fourth, and so on position of this vector, which could, should correspond to these um, time values. So I'm going to set this up in a for loop, where we start at i is equal to 1, our count variable, and we want to run it up until some particular number of times through the loop. Now I'm going to put it up here. The number of times we want to go through the loop is going to correspond to the end time that we want divided by how, um, the step distance, so h. Okay. So if we want to run up until um, time of 1, it's going to be 1 divided by 0.1, which means we have to take 10 steps, which is what this end value should correspond to now. Alright, so I'll put an end here, and inside this for loop we need to apply the Euler's equation. So one of the things that we need to apply the equation is the gradient. And I'm going to call that here we go, gradient in here. And the gradient corresponds to um, basically our differential equation. So jumping back across here, all right, we can see that this is the gradient within the Euler's uh, method. And we can equate it to being a function of time and y at that particular time. So up in here, this is what our gradient function looks like. So we just need to take um, the 3, multiply it by y at a particular point in time, and add t onto it. So I'm going to jump over to MATLAB and program that in. Alright, so we said it was going to be 3, multiplied by the y value at a particular point in time. And I'm going to have to draw it out of my y matrix. So I'm going to put in an i in here, I'll go back to that in a second. And then we said we need to add on the time value at that particular point in time. And again, I'm going to put the little i on the end here. So what this is saying is i is equal to 1 the first time we go through the loop. 
So what it's going to do is pick out the first uh, y value within my y matrix. And I should go back and put this as y1 since that's what I've called it up here. So i is equal to 1, the first value, it's going to draw out 2 and slot it in. Plus then I'm going to look at my time matrix and draw out i is equal to 1, the first one, which would be equal to 0. Okay, so this is going to give me the gradient at that initial point. So what I want to do is use that within the Euler's equation to predict the next point in time. So that would be, I'm going to call it i plus 1. Okay, so if i is initially equal to 1, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So this is going to write to the second position of the y1 matrix. So all I've got to do is apply Euler's equation, which was taking the um, previous um, point, so y1 of i, all right, previous point, and then it was h multiplied by the gradient at that previous point, which I've pre-calculated as being gradient. Okay, So it's going to write to this um, second position, and then it's at the end of the loop. So it's going to go back up and um, go to the next uh, point within the sequence, which would be i is equal to 2. So it's then going to calculate the gradient based on i is equal to 2 in both of these. So it should draw in the 0.1 from the time matrix, and essentially whatever we wrote in the previous um, iteration uh, from the y1 matrix. So then it's going to go through and go, okay, i is equal to 2 now. Uh, sorry, yeah, i is equal to 2 now, so it's going to write to the third position of the I, uh, sorry, y1 matrix and perform that calculation. So if I run this, what we should see is that y1 becomes a um, 10 element matrix, and these correspond, uh, these first few, to what we saw in the manual solution to the problem. And what it's, it's telling us is that at the corresponding t values, so at t is equal to 0, y is equal to 2, t is 0.1, y is 2.6, and so on. These all match up against each other. So what we probably want to do is plot it so we can see whether it looks good. So I'm going to type in my plot function, and this is what it comes out with. So t is on the x-axis, and y is on the y-axis. Um, and that's what our yeah, solution looks like over time. Now, if we want to, we could, I'm going to do this. Um, so the line here, make sure that we have a line plotted. And the O here is going to give us little points um, on where we've actually plotted. All right. So that's what that looks like. And it's going to be helpful for us in a moment when we want to compare to what's happening when we change the step distance. So I'm going to copy all of this because it's pretty useful. And we're going to create our part B, which is where we're going to change the step distance to be half of what it was. So 0 0.05, sorry. So I need to overwrite that here. All right, I'm going to leave the endpoint the same. Um, and we're going to, though, calculate a new time vector. Because we've changed H and we've made it smaller, we're going to have more time points that need to fit in between in order to extend from 0 up to 1 second. Um, I'm going to call this y2 now so we get a second uh, line forming but it's still got the same initial condition and the number of points is going to be updated um, since the h value has been updated. So we're going to run through this um, for loop again. The gradient should be able to be calculated in the same way as before except I'm now going to be referring to the second um, y vector that I'm creating and I'll override it here as well. And at the end, I'm going to want to plot the second uh, one that I've made. So I'll put hold on so we can see more than one in here. And let's give ourselves a legend so we can tell which one's which. So I'll call it Euler1 and Euler2. So if we run this, what we should see is two lines appearing, and they're going to have points on it um, where we've actually calculated so this second one, since it had a step distance that was half of the first one, we can see that we pretty much have twice as many points appearing on the line. And what we should see in a moment is that this line is going to be far more accurate to the uh, analytical, or the exact solution to the problem, um, compared to this blue line. And that's because we've decreased the step distance. So as an example, let's say I reduce this even further make this point 0.1, you'll see a bigger difference again between the two lines, um, just because this one is becoming more and more accurate to, to what it should be. 
Alright, so that's pretty much it in terms of um, plotting the Euler's solutions. So the next thing was looking at um, plotting the ODE45 solution. Alright, so that's part C in here. Um, ODE45 is an inbuilt MATLAB function that um, relies on the runge cutter method, uh, which I talked about in a previous video. This one is more accurate and uh, than the Euler method. And the other thing that it does within MATLAB is it automatically adjusts the step distance um, within this ODE45 uh, function to maintain a um, good level of accuracy. So what we should see is that this ODE45 um, function is really, really close to the analytical solution that we'll get at the end. So jumping across to MATLAB, I'm going to come down here and um, pop in our part C, which is ODE, sorry, 45. So in order to set this up, um, the syntax looks something like this. So I'm going to call it um, T out and Y out, okay? And this is going to be a time vector and the Y solution to the problem. And we have ODE45. And what we just need to type in now is, I'll follow the same syntax as they've got here. So this is the ODE function. T span is the time span that you want your solution between. And YO is the initial um, value of your function. So obviously we need to give MATLAB these three things. So I'll start with the ODE function. So we can define this as an anonymous function. So that's where we put the little at symbol and we want the t comma y okay in that order as well and we want it to be um, essentially what our differential equation is that we're trying to solve so it was three times y plus t so i'll put a little thing on the end there so that it doesn't spit out and uh, the next thing we need to tell matlab is the time span that we want to run over so i want to start at time is equal to zero and we were running up to the t end which was one second so that's going to tell MATLAB to look between uh, these values. And the last thing we need is the y0. Okay, so that's the initial value of our function. And we said that was equal to 2. So when we run this, MATLAB's automatically going to apply this uh, runge cutter variant um, onto our uh, differential equation. And what we're going to be interested in is plotting uh, the solution. So this is the time vector that comes out and this is the y values that come out. And on the end here, I'm gonna put one more thing. So this is gonna be the ODE45 solution. So let's run that. Cool. So the yellow line here is the ODE45 solution. Um, and this one's gonna be pretty bang on to what uh, the exact solution should be. Okay, and what you can see is that um, as you increase the step, sorry, decrease the step distance, all right, so it's getting smaller as you go this way, you're getting more and more accurate to this one here. All right, so the last thing that we were asked to do was to compare to the analytical solution. All right, so that's been provided to us here. So it's just a matter of programming this equation into MATLAB. So I'm going to chuck in our part D, which is the analytical solution. And we're going to define our time vector. Let's go from 0 to uh, 1 in steps of 0.01, just to make it quite um, accurate. And uh, I'll pop in T end here. So the equation that we're trying to um, program, I'll call it Y Anna, is 1 on 9 multiplied by it was negative 3t um, plus 19 times the exponential function and 3t was in that uh, minus 1. So what we should see now is that we can again plot t versus y anna and I'll add on an extra thing down here, analytical. And actually since I think these two are going to be pretty much on top of each other, I'll do this one as some points, all right, some dots so we can identify the difference. So when we run it, what we can see is that these dots here represent the analytical solution and pretty much right underneath it is the, the yellow line, which is ODE45. You can see that the ODE45 was a pretty accurate uh, numerical solution. So that's pretty much it in terms of this video and comparing the various different um, solutions to that problem.